Hey everyone, this is Rob Stenzinger, and uh, I want to share with you this technique that I picked up during uh, the 30 Classes in 30 Days event at Lean Into Art. Uh, specifically, it was by uh, Krishna Sadasavam of uh, PCWeenies.com. He was teaching um, a four-class series called uh, Creating Crazy Characters. Very interesting um, in that I got to see him go through this technique multiple times where he would, um, you know, create, um, you know, shape outlines and all of a sudden they would fill. And, uh, you know, he was, he was creating these in, um, Adobe Photoshop, I believe. And as he would make his lines all, uh, with the lasso tool, he would, um, hit a button and then fill in a shape. Well, I realized that, Hey, wait a minute. That's, kind of familiar. I, I do something similar when I go about my um, uh, coloring process for my comic. And, uh, but what Krishna was doing it for was uh, to establish the character silhouette. And by making the character um, very clearly communicating in its silhouette, it becomes more readable and it can um, be, I guess, as a piece of information, it's more efficient. And perhaps more easily identified, and your, uh, your readers would you know, discover what's going on, both inside the character and outside. I mean, are they, what are they carrying? What is their action? What kind of feelings do, do they have about it? And all that. Um, you can get a lot of that work done by um, you know, trying to have a, a clear reading silhouette. So I'd seen him do this enough uh, throughout those four classes where I became pretty enamored with it, um, started trying it during class, but then thought, well, I better be paying attention to make sure, uh, you know, Krishna or the students <laughs> may need me as I'm just there to assist and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, over the, the last few weeks, I've, I've dabbled a bit here and there before, uh, going to bed and, and I've been, uh, you know, playing with this technique in various ways, uh, in, um, you know, I mentioned Krishna was using Photoshop, and I was um, I commonly use uh, Photoshop for my coloring, also. But uh, I thought, well, what if I did this in uh, pencil? And so I tried to just do sort of a sketchy character outline, uh, maybe playing with it, not trying to noodle too much, not trying to do like a, I didn't do sort of a, you know, a three D skeleton of uh, the character based on a line of action, and uh, you know. Uh, stick figure with, you know, joints and all this kind of stuff to show what, what part is, is posed where to then add a skin over or, you know, obviously layers of uh, <clears throat> living material between, you know, the skeleton and the outside, whatever. It's just going straight to the outside. And, you know, because it's, it's this, you know, the, these, these boundaries that are, that are communicating to you from, you know, from the background to what is the character, it's that shape doing a lot of work. And so this process really em emphasizes and utilizes the shape. Um, and so what's neat is you don't have to use Photoshop. You could just use um, pencil and, and... So I actually, um, like I mentioned, I was playing around with this technique, just sort of as a relaxing thing before going to bed. Um, and I decided to use uh, uh, InkPad, which is a tool I I bought for my iPad, which I, I let's see... I think it's just a few dollars, maybe it's ten at the most. Um, I felt it was pretty reasonable at the time anyway. It's been many months since I purchased it. Um, I suppose I should have researched that before recording this, but um, I leave that as an exercise for you. Anyway, um, here you go. It's a vector-based drawing tool. And why did I do that? Because um, I also have played around with, um, I did about 30 episodes of Art Geek Zoo purely in Illustrator, or, you know, almost purely in Illustrator, and uh, Adobe Illustrator, that is, uh, and I think at the time it was uh, CS3, and then over the years I've upgraded to 5, um, not 5.5, .5, what have you, but anyway, many, many versions of Illustrator work with this uh, concept where you essentially start drawing a shape and based on your settings, all of a sudden the shape auto fills, where wherever you let go of the line um, with your with your mouse or 
Wacom tablet, all of a sudden uh, you can have the shape instantly fill. And that same behavior works in this vector program uh, called InkPad as well. Okay, you can see here my, um, my files, my work in progress here in InkPad, and um, you may recognize some of the characters here. Um, I've, um, you know, I was playing with a, a character concept that, that a friend of mine, his comic was about, and that was just kind of a safe experiment to not get all tied up in my own characters and, you know, noodling too much. Um, but then uh, here's an, a, a quick Zoe Zeus. Uh, you may also recognize uh, this guitar from Art Geek Zoo, uh, and then this uh, instructor, but then it depends on what part of the comic you've read it, if you have. And uh, so here I, here I am playing with you know various poses and various characters, um, mostly from Art Geek Zoo, and uh, playing around with uh, with this this the pros and cons of, of this approach. And I'm and as I've gone along, I'm you know, I'm joking a bit, saying I'm I'm addicted to it. But you know, as once in a while, when you work on your art process, you come across a a, a tool that's that's a permanent. It's a keeper. It's like um, I don't. How was I doing this um, art before I was doing these uh, these silhouettes? Because it you get to separate the concerns of all these details and whatnot um, that that fill in the. Um, you know that that sell the rest of the character. I mean the the details of their face and their, um, the the, the textures and nuances, but at the same time, it, um, those details will speak even more clearly when the when they're given such a uh, strong uh, frame to live within. So anyway, very sold on this, and you can see I've you know made a, a couple of dozen of these things over um, the course of the last few weeks, just playing around a few minutes here and there. So as to a quick overview of how I'm doing it, um, here you go. I've uh, you know launched a document in um, in InkPad on my iPad, and uh, I begin by I, I need to have the uh, the brush tool selected here, and of course in in other um, uh, vector based apps you don't have to use a, a brush. You could use a pencil as well. Um, then the next really important thing is making sure that the outline is shut off and then that the fill is turned on. So what will happen with InkPad is automatically that behavior I described earlier with, with um, uh, Illustrator where I'm outlining a shape and then I let I pick up my my stylus on my Wacom tablet or what have you and all of a sudden boom it's filled and then I make another shape and boom it's filled or maybe I'm you know trying to use uh, uh, you know, do a larger shape, whatever. It, it just keeps all of a sudden creating this outline really quickly and easily. Um, something that's it's just very satisfying about this approach, where there's not even an extra button press. All I'm doing is just I, you know, I put my pen down, I lift my pen up, put my pen down, lift it up, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. These shapes start filling in. And what I have in mind as I'm doing this is like what Krishna taught during his class: is the, you know, what, uh, you know, what are the emotions. Of the character, what are what's the, uh, um, and this is my paraphrasing. I'm not trying to. The, his class is. I highly recommend taking it. Um, well worth your time, uh, and I'm sure Lean Into Art will be offering it again sometime soon. But um, you know, th just for this is like a little sampling of, of what I took away from it. Um, and you get basically you get to show the you know the inner and uh, outer life of uh, of your character their action so you get to see are they happily dancing are they dancing very sadly or what have you and here, here I have sort of a um, a, a drummer character from uh, from Art Geek Zoo that's kind of you know kicking back on the drum throne and and uh, being rather excited and, and exuberant about about his uh, his drum playing anyway um, so yeah is the character's name is Sticks Spazola, um, spelled Spazola. But anyway, um, what else do we got here? Uh, yeah, so I, I would go around, around this process of making the shapes, and they fill in, and uh, 
one thing I noticed that even though I'm working in two dimensions, uh, and, and it ends up as a flat visual, that just by thinking about the structure of the character and having a concern in the back of my head about the volume, I noticed that it doesn't feel that as two-dimensional as it could uh, as I start filling in the shapes because uh, there's a bit of foreshortening going on, there's some twisting at the hips, and of course the, you know, with, the, with communicating the pose and all that. So it ends up being this, this um, really handy uh, structure to then build off of when I start to sketch the, uh, the details. So I don't know, we'll see. I might add this for some of at least the, um, the more critical moments, even during like my panel-to-panel -panel comic creation, creating process. We, we'll see. I'll definitely experiment with it. And um, I'll um, be sure to uh, share how that goes. Um, down the road. Anyway, um, yeah, I hope uh, hope this video gets you to consider, you know, doing your your character silhouettes as uh, part of your character design process, and maybe even your day to day character drawing process because um, it's uh, it's a pretty darn awesome technique, and I was glad to have uh, learned it from Krishna's class. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and again, I'm Rob Stenzinger, and. You can check out my stuff at uh, leanintoart.com and also interactive-storyteller.com. Thanks for watching.